The Spurs got a much-needed win last night, beating the shorthanded Nets, who played without Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Spurs rookie Jeremy Sohan scored 16 points, making six of his 12 shots. Josh Richardson came off the bench with the Spurs, and he scored nine points in 27 minutes. San Antonio led by as many as 14 points in the first quarter. Now the Spurs' big dog last night was Kelvin Johnson, fourth frame. Spurs leading by four. Sohan finds Johnson for a high arcing three, and it's good. I mean, that ball went out of the video frame. It was so high. Kelvin scored a career-high 36 points to go with 11 rebounds. Spurs win at 106 to 98, ending their five game losing streak. First off, um, I feel like, um, you know, it's why I played the game of basketball. I feel like I had it going tonight and I just kept going. Um, it's definitely a big moment, someday I, I'll definitely remember. But, uh, you know, we, I just got to keep striving to get better. And, um, you know, my teammates and coaches continue to put me in um, amazing situations. Uh, to be successful uh, as a young player, as a, as a as I'm coming up in the, in the NBA, so um, you know, just as much as it's me that is career high, it, it's for my team as well because they, you know, without them it wouldn't be possible. Yeah, you know, just a ton of energy, a ton of confidence, and you know, that's who Keldon is. Um, you know, he's great. We all trust him, and you know, he's gonna do his thing. Spurs will next host the L.A. Clippers Friday night at 7. So the Clippers hosting the Sixers last night. Kawhi Leonard steals the ball and races back for a slam dunk. The claw led L.A.C. with 27 points. Back at the other end, James Harden will feed Joel Embiid, who fakes a three. Defender flies by. Then he shoots and nails it to beat the first half buzzer. He scored 26 in the first half in a game-high 41 and helped the Sixers win 120-110. to The Clippers are 2-8 and eight in their last 10 games. Number seven, Texas lost to number 12, Iowa State last night. The Cyclones will take the lead for good in the second half with this three-pointer by Gabe Klauscher to make a 52-51 home team. And the Cyclones protect home court 78-67. to Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys defense held seven-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady scoreless in the first half for the first time since his first playoff game back in 2001, and they did it in a number of ways. J. Ron Kurtz was one of the reasons for the early shutout, intercepting Brady in the end zone, and Micah Parsons had two passes defensed and a sack in the 31-14 victory and wildcard weekend in Tampa, the first playoff win for the boys since 2018. It was the defensive mindset of this game, you know, how we was going to go about it, you know, how we was going to go about our work this game and just going out there and execute, you know, it didn't have a whole lot to do with Tampa Bay, uh, it was more so what we were doing, you know, and I feel like we went out there and did what we were supposed to. We have to have that approach almost every time, and uh, we got to continue that. We, you know, we can't off the gas. Everyone was locked in, disappointed about that Washington loss. We need that same focus, that same attention to detail, that same execution going into this week, too. We get to right our wrongs. Uh, we wrote one uh, tonight. We get to write, a, write another one tomorrow, so I meant next week. So, you know, it's all this about us doing our job. Like I said, uh, coming into this week, doing our job, reading our keys, getting our eyes on the right thing, and uh, we can go out there and play with anybody. Yeah, he's talking about going one and done last season against the Niners. Mm -hmm. And a quick question. Uh -huh. When Kawhi comes to town, Spurs fans, should they still boo him? Or is that Probably will. Is that over? The bridge? I don't no. know. Who's, what's his name again? <laughs> <laughs> This is why everybody wants to be Larry, though. Look at he's cash. He went to he went to Tampa for the for World the dub traveler. for the Cowboys. Yeah. Comes home, catches the Spurs game, then he's on the road again. Sometimes Larry doesn't dub. want to be Larry. I don't think anybody wants to be me. Yeah. Man, are you That's kidding me? That's not true. Oh, I don't think so. My son will trade places with you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, thanks, Larry. Cap of the Hill, it's another battle over money. This time lawmakers talking about raising or suspending the country's borrowing gap, how their decision could affect your bottom line. And food poisoning. Yuck. It is not fun for anyone, but every year millions of us get hit with a case of salmonella. Coming up today at 5, 12 in your size, Marilyn Moore and shows what the federal government says it's going to do to try to reduce the number of these cases and how soon that could happen. We'll tell you about it at 5. The National Archives is not sharing information about the classified documents found at President Biden's office and home with Congress. It is now saying that it needs to consult with the Justice Department before it does so. The congressional committee that is investigating those documents had set a Tuesday deadline for the archives to respond to a request for interviews. However, the archives says it first has to ensure it doesn't interfere with the special counsel's criminal probe of the documents. Acting archivist Deborah Seidel is also pushing back against accusations that the archives is treating Biden differently than former President Donald Trump. He said, she said rather, the archives did not publicly disclose its discussions with Trump about classified documents for nine months. 
until the scandal was publicly reported. And get ready to hear a lot about the debt ceiling. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the United States will reach its debt limit tomorrow. What does that mean for your wallet? Not much, at least not yet. But if Congress doesn't settle on a solution, it could take a devastating toll on the U.S. economy. And as CNN's Karen Kafa tells us, it could impact your bottom line. The debt ceiling will be the talk of Washington until lawmakers on Capitol Hill can compromise and take action. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen starting a clock for Congress to either raise or suspend the country's borrowing cap beyond the current $31.4 trillion or risk an unprecedented U.S. default. Yellen wrote lawmakers on Friday to say the U.S. will hit its debt limit on Thursday, but the Treasury Department will take measures to allow breathing room until at least June. The last time a political debate pushed the U.S. to a brink of default was 2011, and the chaos resulted in the first long-term credit rating downgrade in the nation's history. To threaten to not pay America's debts would put all of us at risk. But new House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has indicated he may take a hard line on a debt increase, likely to satisfy some conservatives at the heart of his bruising battle for the gavel. Let's start paying this debt off and make sure the future generation has as many opportunities as we do. If Congress can't agree on an increase, experts say interest rates on everything from your credit card debt to auto loans to mortgages could skyrocket as it becomes more expensive for the U.S. to borrow. The stock market could tank, hammering retirement accounts, and the Treasury Department might decide to delay or temporarily halt payments like Social Security checks, Medicare disbursements, and military pay to cover debts. And while Washington isn't panicking just yet, the White House has recommended that an agreement come sooner rather than later to avoid rattling an already uncertain U.S. economy. That was CNN's Karen Kafer reporting. Now, if you are looking to buy a used car, now may be a great time to do it. After record high prices over the last couple of years, the plunge is steep. Edmonds is saying that the average price of a used car last month was just under $30,000. That's a drop of $1,600 since April. And if you're shopping for a low price, make sure you do your research on the inventory. For example, some dealers have fewer Toyota RAV4s because they're in such high demand. So you will actually still pay big bucks if you want one of those SUVs. On the other end of the spectrum, a Ram 1500, we've seen folks save over 15% off of MSRP on Ram 1500s because there's a lot more inventory. Dealers are sitting on them. The age of the car is going to make a difference, too. Edmund says newer used cars are down just 5%. Cars five years and older are seeing a 15% drop or more. Microsoft laying off 10,000 workers. That is according to a security filing. The company says it's cutting costs in response to looming recession fears and changing customer priorities. In a memo to staffers Wednesday, Microsoft CEO said the job cuts represent less than 5% of the company's total workforce and that will, those layoffs will be completed by the end of March. Microsoft is just the latest company to reduce its workforce to cut costs amid economic uncertainty. Other tech companies like Amazon, Salesforce, and Facebook, parent company Meta, have all recently announced layoffs. We're looking outside with live cam, another pretty day. It's hump day. Hump day. We're halfway through <laughs> the week, and so far it's been pretty nice. It has. The bluest of blue skies out there uh, as uh, we make our way into the second half of our week. Uh, temperatures, not so bad today. A little cooler than yesterday, but not by much. 74 degrees right now in San Antonio. Notice there are some 80s. Corpus Christi down to Brownsville, and it cools all the way down into the 40s as you get out towards El Paso and Marfa. 51 right now up in Amarillo. So a pretty big divide between the warm and low temperature here across the state has to do with a frontal battery that's working through. Eventually, we'll all cool down and see some drier air. As we look at the bigger picture here across the country, there is some cold stuff up north, but not terribly cold. 32 Omaha, 32 in Minneapolis. It's 19 right now in International Falls. These fronts have not dragged down terribly cold air. It's been mostly Pacific air masses that just uh, cools down a little bit, but not a lot. As we look at the weather headlines, low humidity today, gusty winds, that equals a fire danger for most of us. Showers on Saturday, possibility, we'll see a chance early in the day, and then we'll have some more fronts 
coming in next week. Could that mean a cooler end of the month? There's some indications that could be the case. Uh, it's been a pretty warm January so far. 74 degrees at the airport. Clear skies. Dew point is at 40, and we've got a north northwesterly wind at 15. There's the satellite picture, and you can see the clouds right there. There is the front. It is quickly moving towards the Texas coast and clearing out our area, but uh, there is uh, quite a bit of weather for parts of Louisiana and Arkansas as you get up into Missouri and snow across parts of Nebraska this afternoon. Texas is going to be looking at some pretty good weather next couple of days before again some changes over the weekend. We'll take another look at that forecast for you coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Justin. Coming up, Brennan and Harlan girls basketball game last night full of some big time shots. Larry Mears has the highlights with a little extra time as well coming up. A show that's focused on a movie mystery of Titanic proportions. Could Jack and Rose really have both fit on that floating door in the Titanic moving? It's been eating at you for years. We have details on a scientific reenactment. Justin Horn doesn't care, but it is oh, something that Titanic fans have been debating for years. Did Rose sink Jack's chances for survival by being the only occupant on that piece of floating debris? And she's just like, they're going to go, Jack, Jack. He's frozen. All right, so there's a forensic reenactment of the so-called door scene. CNN's Jeannie Mose reports as part of a documentary that's going to be released next month. It's the unsinking of the Titanic. Time to coincide with the movie's 25th anniversary. The film's director is trying to finally slam the door on that age old question about the door. Jack! Did Rose hog it when Jack could have fit? Room on that door for a family of four, argue critics adding pooches to prove the point. But now Nat Geo presents a scientific reenactment. Using stunt doubles plastered with sensors floundering in cold water, this is the teaser, they consulted an expert on hypothermia. Within eight minutes, Jack would have been unconscious in that position. And by the way, director James Cameron told reporters, it's technically not a door. It's a piece of paneling from the first class lounge. Yeah, well, whatever it was, it's been put to the test before. I think Jack's death was needless. Mythbusters determined that if only they'd tied Rose's life jacket underneath the wood, the additional buoyancy could have supported them both. But director Cameron was unmoved. He has to die. The dude's going down. Cameron compares it to Romeo and Juliet. In the famous line, you say, I'll never let you go, Jack. I'll never let go. I promise. But you do. I lie. This is one movie controversy that just won't sink. <laughs> Colbert and Kate Winslet. Come on, darling, there's room for two. Have already done their own reenactment and no lifeboats were needed. All hands on desk. Yes! Jeannie Motes, CNN, New York. People just have a little too much time on their hands. <laughs> I'm with James Cameron, though. He had to die. Think about if he didn't die. They would have gotten married. Yeah, but that, no, he had, he had, no, that was. I think we might be overthinking all of it. <laughs> really? I think. Really? I, I think. agree with the hypothermia thing. That scene went far too long. Oh, he would true. have been frozen solid. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Uh, guys, we, we want to alert you of a traffic situ situation here at 281 and Hildebrand. We've got some lanes closed here. It's slowing down traffic. This is uh, northbound and uh, we're seeing some red on the map. So just a heads up, if you're heading out of downtown on 281, there are some backups there. We're going to talk about the warm temperatures. We're in the mid 70s and how long they'll last coming up. Welcome back. Let's take another look outside. We've got blue skies really across South Texas. Now there's a few clouds south and east of town, but for the most part, this is the view we have and it is a nice one. 74 degrees at the airport right now. 75 stints in 74, both Kelly and Randolph. And we're watching those winds closely right now out of the north northwest at about 15 miles per hour. But they have been gusty from time to time. There's that cloud cover I was talking about. There are a few showers and a few storms as you get well east of our area. But that front right about there, right at about Beeville, and it's starting to push towards the Texas coast and it'll be out of here soon. 
uh, in the wake of that system. The temperatures didn't cool down that much. Uh, we're at 78 Pleasanton, 77 Kennedy. We've got dry air, westerly component to our winds. So those still keep us pretty warm, at least this afternoon. 70 Kerrville, 69 right now in Fredericksburg. And as we look closer at Bear County, mid 70s right now. So pretty nice afternoon, and, uh, minus those gusty winds. Uh, relative humidity is actually a big deal today. We're going to be watching that closely too because of these, as these numbers fall to around 20% or less as we get into the late afternoon and early evening hours. That means there's a high fire danger. You combine that with the gusty winds and grass fires can spread very quickly. So obviously outdoor burning, really bad idea today. Uh, and here's why. We've got this storm system that's spinning. It looks like a big comma, right? Out ahead of it, you got the very moist air, severe weather, snow on the backside of it. And then with that pressure grading, you get the strong winds coming down through the uh, backside of things into Texas. And that's what we're dealing with here. And not only here, but uh, West Texas and uh, a lot of South Texas is dealing with those gusty winds. We mentioned the tornado watch box still there. This line still producing severe weather as we speak from Arkansas down into far, far east of Texas. It'll be out of here uh, pretty quickly. And then as you look on the back side of it, we talked about the gusty winds. So red flag warnings are in effect from Lubbock to Wichita Falls all the way down to San Antonio and Del Rio encompasses a large area here because there's a, a fire danger basically for all of West Texas. And then you've got high wind warnings as you get out into the mountains. Uh, here's a look at some of the wind gusts. Gusting close to 50 in Lubbock. So there's going to be some dust kicked up here. Some of that could funnel back down towards our area. And wind gusts locally. Right now we're seeing gusts 20, 22, uh, Castroville, Port SA. Not seeing any real big gusts at the airport yet. I do think that probably picks up a little bit in the coming hours. New Braunfels seen a gust of 26 out of the northwest. Hopefully that doesn't kick up a lot of mountain cedar either. We'll see with tomorrow's count. It was already high today. Uh, 77, the forecast high. We're down into the 50s tonight and eventually 40s by tomorrow morning. 41 here in San Antonio. A lot of 40s on the map. Uh, could even see a few 30s in the hill country, but uh, needless to say, it'll be a chilly start as uh, we get into tomorrow. What about rain chances? We've got another opportunity coming up on Saturday, just about a 30% chance, and then again Monday and Tuesday. So we have some more chances ahead. Don't know that we're going to get a lot of rain out of this, but at least the opportunities are there. And very quickly, here's a look at that next rain chance. Right now that system's up across Pacific Northwest. It moves towards Texas as we get into the weekend. And by Saturday, about a 30% chance with some showers. And I think that's mainly in the morning time and then by the afternoon, a lot of this is moving out. So the seven day forecast, 71 tomorrow, 66 Friday, mostly cloudy, 30% chance of some showers on Saturday and then clearing out on Sunday with a high of 66. We'll be right back. Yeah, yeah. So last night we actually practiced and uh, we had the Cowboys game on the big screen. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been the coolest two days, you know, here at JP2. Uh, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't ask for nothing else. One night after watching the Cowboys play, Coach Blackwell and his John Paul II basketball team picked up a cool win in big board sports. It was a big night last night at John Paul II High School in Shirts where both varsity basketball teams played their first ever home games in their brand new gym. The Guardians are true road warriors, but now they can finally say home sweet home. Number two, Jeffrey Maldonado led the Guardians with 21 points. Chase Clinton scored 17. Josh McGuire and Aroth Velasquez both ended up with double digits as well. And check out this steal and slam dunk from Maldonado. Very nice. That's how you break in a new gym, right? The JP2 Guardians beat CC and Carnet Word by the Final of 76 to 30. It's been it's been quite a journey. It's been uh, it's been one for for the record books. Uh, you know this is history in the making tonight. I mean a lot of people have uh, have come before us and um, you know including a couple of coaches, um, a heap of players, you know tons of parents, and it means a lot to the community. Uh, you know we've we've elevated and ascended every year. And, uh, you know, it's just been a blessing to see these to see this program grow to where it's grown and see the, the reputation grow, the notoriety we got over the last couple of years. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a dream come true to be in this building right now, representing this community and seeing these boys play the way they did tonight. I was promised one my freshman year and ever since then it has been on my mind constantly, constantly, constantly. It's been amazing to be in this environment with this family we have. You know, Coach Black was in seventh grade. He's family to me. It's been amazing. Like a dream come true, you know? Always, always thought about having a home game, especially this nice gym we had. Amazing, amazing. 
The JP2 girls also played CC and Carnot Word. The Guardians led by as many as 10 points, but the Angels rallied in the second half to spoil the party 48 to 41. More boys basketball. Wagner hosts and Bernie champion in district. Less than seven seconds to go, tied at 49. Wagner inbounding the ball after champion was called for a five second violation. Now the ball goes back to the inbounding passer, Devontae Durst, and he drains the game winning three ball with one second left. Two pump fakes, and he's money. Wagner wins this 26 5A contest 52 49, improved proving to five and one in district. That young man was certainly clutch. In girls hoops, big district 29-6A battle at Northside Sports Gym. Brennan taking on Harlan last night. Overtime action, Harlan's Kasten Young drives and makes a floater off the glass, tying this to 71. I mean, that was clutch as well. Same score, Bella Flemings drives to the basket for the go-ahead lane with 35 seconds to go. That holds up as the game winner. Flemings finished with a game high 27 points. The Bears survived 73-71 in overtime, improving to 11 and 0 in district, 21 and three overall. Our Brennan is now 21 and 4 overall and 8 and 2 in district play. Guys, that's a lot of great action there on the court last night. Thanks, Larry. And we're going to head over to SA Live where the hump day party's underway. Oh, yeah. yes. And you know what listen. time it is? It's burger listen. time. Yes, love that sound. Antonio <laughs> Tapa is here from Bar Louie, and we are making, what's this burger called? Uh, yes, sir, so this is going to be the My Jam Burger. That's My Jam Burger, and it's got a, a lot of interesting toppings. So we're going to have the garlic aioli as the base. We're going to have the garlic herb cheese spread. We got some fresh, beautiful arugula, mm. our in-house seasoned blend. We got some pickles to top it. Can't have a burger without pickles. And then my favorite, just I made this today, it's going to be our old-fashioned bourbon jam. It's going to have amaretta great cherries. Great toppings. Oh, they got yeah. a great deal as well, but what shouldn't go on a burger? Uh, let us know at SA Live Taste Out on Facebook and Twitter, and you may see your answer in the show in a few minutes. You would have to see where I you? sure did, because let the good times roll. Mardi Gras is coming up, and we're going to tell you where you can celebrate and enjoy incredible French cuisine. Yes, and how about celebrating the Renaissance Fair? And Jen is going to show us all about falconry. Yes, and you know, you kind of see all those life hacks or, you know, makeup hacks mm -hmm. on TikTok, right? So we are going to test a few of them out today and see if they really work. That and a whole lot more, and I got lunch cooking on SA Live.